So uh, happy to be here to present uh, Psychzone. Psychzone is uh, listed on F Nasdaq First North. We are developing drugs in autoimmune space uh, and uh, with ambition of uh, uh, getting drugs to the market that have transformative characteristics to the patients. Lately, we have communicated a change in strategy for our lead project, Rebeximod, which is indicated for rheumatoid arthritis. And I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, so the reason for this strategic change has been driven very much by the changes in the uh, treatment landscape for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, in 2022, we saw that the JAK inhibitors uh, received uh, regulatory restrictions uh, in the, the indication of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, in the US, these drugs are not, no longer prescribed to patients over 50 years of age. Uh, what we have also seen is that uh, the TNF-alpha inhibitors have gone off patent, and uh, they're now meeting a strong competition for biosimilars. This year, uh, nine biosimilars to Humira, which was last year's biggest selling drug, um, were uh, launched on the market in the US. What we see in, as a consequence of this is that uh, we will have a lack of treatment options for patients that have t uh, lack of response to TNF-alpha inhibitors. This is where we are now uh, putting our focus with Rebeximod. So it's very much driven from a commercial perspective. What we know today is that we have a drug project that has been tested quite widely in two phase two studies. Uh, we have collected safety data from almost 300 patients. Uh, so we are very confident with the uh, safety profile of Rebeximod. Um, we have demonstrated clinical, relevant clinical effect in 225 patients, phase 2A study, in patients with severe rheumatoid arthritis. Based on this, we are now then focused on, on, on uh, this new patient population. I will tell you a little bit more about that. Another factor that has uh, impact on the new strategic change is that during May of 2023, the company got a new uh, board of directors. We have uh, familiar names like Michael Orson, who's the chairman of the board, uh, Bert Juno, who's the founder of the company, Jürgen Ries coming from Beringer in Heim, where he was heading the CNS and immunology portfolio for Beringer, Andrew Scori, who has uh, worked in the uh, life, life science and um, um, food industry for many, many years in, uh, in senior positions in marketing. So, our pipeline consists of two assets. Rebeximod, which is our lead molecule that has come the farthest. It is a small molecule that is targeting um, macrophages, very important cell in the immune system. The other project we see opportunities for in multiple sclerosis. T20K is a cyclic peptide that is modulating T cell responses. Uh, I will continue to talk mostly about our Rebeximod project. So Rebeximod has gone through a phase 2B, 2A study in uh, patients with severe rheumatoid arthritis. What we are now targeting is a patient population that are inadequate responders to TNF-alpha blockers. That's where we see the current unmet medical need. We are also looking into other autoimmune diseases because macrophages as a cell, cell subset is implicated in so many autoimmune uh, indications. So there's a very interesting opportunity for Bexmod in other indications. Um, going over to uh, Rebeximod and or rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is the most common uh, autoimmune disease in the world. Um, 20 million people living with autoimmune dis or with rheumatoid arthritis. It's a chronic disease that causes joint pain and uh, deformity and bone erosion and so on, requiring lifelong uh, treatment. We do see that uh, many patients do not respond adequately to the current uh, treatment uh, uh, that are out there. Uh, so there's a strong need for new medications based on new mechanisms of action and ideally also 
drugs that are non-injectables, so oral medications. Um, so what is known when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis is, is that uh, macrophages uh, are established very, very early in the disease, so actually before you get a diagnosis. And they continue to drive the disease and eventually it, it will leave, lead to a joint uh, accumulation. Uh, our medical advisor, Martin Kron, who we have been working with for many, many years, uh, is, has made, done a lot of research in um, rheumatoid arthritis early. Back in 2001, they came to the conclusion that the reduction in synovial membrane macrophage content uh, should really be the aim of uh, treating rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so when it comes to disease, there's a lot of uh, different factors that uh, are involved in the establishment of the disease. Uh, one of the most important factors is, of course, macrophages that are early in the disease driving the disease. Uh, currently, there are no drugs on the market that actually target macrophages themselves. There are a number of established drugs out there, like TNF-alpha blockers, uh, the IL-6 blockers and so on, uh, that targets molecules downstream of the macrophage. But uh, no drug is impacting on the function of the macrophage. Uh, so that's where we see an opportunity for Rebeximod. We know that Rebeximod is impacting on the function and the establishment of macrophages. Uh, the proof of this, I guess, uh, comes from this Phase 2A study. Uh, involving 225 patients with severe rheumatoid arthritis. These are patients that have been living with disease for eight years, that had uh, 20 to 30 engaged joints, and that came into this study with high disease activity scores. So if we look at the blue line here, that's uh, Rebeximod 50 milligram, that after eight weeks of treatment is provide, providing treatment effect. Uh, that we also see uh, continue then in, into week 12. The interesting aspect of this one is after finishing treatment at week 12, these patients continue to improve. And that is probably not seen uh, in, with other drugs. So we have a lot of confidence in moving Rebeximod forward into a new uh, patient uh, uh, population. What we intend to do now is to run a um, proof of concept study in patient cohort with partial or inadequate response to TNF blockers. And we are adding Rebeximod on top of metotrexate and TNF alpha inhibitors. Uh, that's a population which has a, a high unmet medical need today because there are really no treatment options for these patients. Looking at the business case, um, as mentioned, we are targeting this population that uh, supersedes the Betrex and TNF alpha inhibitors, where we see a high degree of unmet medical need, up to 50% fail to maintain uh, low disease activity. Market, Humiros has been mentioned. It uh, last year was the biggest selling drug, selling for 20 billion US dollar. It's indicated in 16 different autoimmune indications. Uh, so there is a well-established market that we can enter, but we will enter uh, with working with the industry, not against the industry. So trying to position Rebex mod in line with the needs uh, following TNF blockers. Again, the market is big, 29 billion in 2027. Uh, and, of course, uh, going to market, uh, there will be pretty good business. Uh, one other factor that has implicated on a strategic change is the granting of a new patent for a new uh, salt form of Rebexamon. This will give us another patent lifetime until 2042. So very, very important for us in our value building process. So just to finish off, we are targeting central disease drivers with a new mechanism of action. We have documented efficacy in difficult or, tri or tri patients that have a um, high degree of, of disease. 
We have a convenient non-injectable oral formulation. And we are uh, getting into a well-established and sustainable uh, global market where there are favorable partnership opportunities. And lastly, we have a very strong value building pattern strategy. Thank you so much, Carl Magnus. Are there any questions for Carl Magnus? I will start then. You mentioned here, obviously, the, the new strategy driven by a change in, in the market, but also this new patent that you got. Maybe. What kind of doors does this patent open for you? Well, first and foremost, we have another 20 years of patent lifetime that gives us a lot more freedom to uh, explore new avenues with Rebeximod, moving into other related indications. But uh, again, you know, we, we feel that we can actually um, commit some time in exploring this new pati uh, patient population and um, build evidence in that population before we commit to larger, more expensive clinical trials. You mentioned the new board as well. How important have they been in this change of strategy? They have been very instrumental. They come out in, into this with um, uh, all their experience from the industry, of course. Uh, like Someone like uh, Jürgen Ries, for instance, he, he's been part of Beringer for a long time. He's been shaping their um, immunology portfolio, have launched a number of drugs on the market. Uh, you know, coming into this, reflecting on how we could work with this has been incredibly valuable. So you have the, the board with you, obviously, but what about key opinion leaders that you've maybe known before? What, what do they say about the change in strategy? Yeah, so the key opinion leaders have also been very important in this process. We have reached out to quite a number of them, both in the US and the Euro in Europe, uh, in order to get their insights on where is the unmet medical need, and there's strong agreement from them that uh, this uh, patient population that we're now targeting is highly relevant because they don't really have any relevant treatment alternatives for these patients. Thank you for an interesting presentation. And I think your new the strategy is, is very good. But I'm also curious about this new segment. I mean, it's not like completely empty. I mean, you have on the market today, you have the JAK inhibitors, and you also have many products under development which will fill this space in the future. How do you see your positioning compared to those drugs? Yeah, so when it comes to JAK inhibitors, there's of course a lot of uh, development still in the JAK inhibitor space. Uh, but FDA have uh, issued a class-wide black box warnings on the JAK inhibitors in the US. So they will no longer be the drugs to go for uh, in the US market. And also EMA has issued a recommendation for the JAK inhibitors due to the safety concerns with that drug clause. Uh, other than that, uh, if you are a TNF-alpha uh, inadequate responder, the only other option is to really shift over to another biologics like tocilizumab, IL-6 blocker, or rituximab. But that shift is so unpredictable for the, for the do treating doctor because you don't really know which of these drugs that will be efficient. Doc doctors today would rather like to add something on top of the treatment that works than shifting to something else. And you don't mix two biologics. So that's uh, critical. We have a question over here. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Just a question regarding the uh, the planned phase 2B. Would would that be a 4 week or a 12 week and and will you also be showing ACR 50 and 70 levels? So the planned uh, study that we intend to do is not a formalized uh, phase 2B study as such. So it what will not be a um a, a blinded uh, a placebo controlled uh, study as such. Uh, it will be a smaller study where we are seeking sign signals for efficacy in this patient population. So it's a proof of concept uh, type of study. Uh, we need to um, collect data in this patient bef population before we actually move on to much larger, larger studies. But we are, of course, looking for the ACRs and the DAS28s and all those very important um, clinical scores that you need to have. But we also intend to look for biomarkers 
uh, and other um, very important uh, parameters to, to um, see signal. Yeah, and uh, follow up on that, uh, financially, what's the, uh, what does this mean financially for the company, the, the strategy shift that this, you're making? The strategy change will certainly have implications on um, the budgets ahead. Uh, so we had a planned phase 2B study with uh, 160 patients. Uh, the budget ahead will be much smaller because those studies that we are planning will be in close interaction with the, the clinics where we are intent to run these studies.